Hello and welcome back to Robbie's Arcade and if that slightly worrying message on the screen doesn't tell you enough today we're talking about Ultimate Mortal Kombat the arcade game. It was a big game from, you saw it, Midway and it was the fourth Mortal Kombat game to hit the arcade. Mortal Kombat 1, 2, 3 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Now long before the days of you know popular um, DLC content and kind of side and add-on packages this was the first time in an arcade that they took an existing game and really supersized it. I know a number of you are thinking out there, Oof, you're thinking, not thinking about Super Street Fighter there. No, no, I would say that's a different game. What this game uses is the original engine of Mortal Kombat 3 and goes mental. This ended up on a numerous console platforms all the way to the present day, available on iOS and Android platforms as well as the Mortal Kombat Collection with a K. But of all the Mortal Kombat games I ever played, this as a kid was truly breathtaking. I got this originally for the Mega Drive one Christmas, and it was phenomenal. And unbeknownst to me, I'd never got an opportunity to play the arcade version. The arcade version is so much better with more levels, better moves, um, better endings. There was so much more going for it, and a lot of that was to do with RAM. And basically, how much RAM a system needs to keep things going. Do check out my other channel, uh, Robbie on the Tube at Span TV. Uh, on another YouTube there to learn more about data and RAM and CPUs and stuff. But this game, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, was a real leap forward in terms of Mortal Kombat because this was the closest for me that Mortal Kombat ever got to approaching Street Fighter because it was people already knew the rules. If you came into Mortal Kombat 3 and didn't know how to play it, you were going to have a bad time. Mortal Kombat 3 <clears throat> had a slightly slower pace for it, but Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 had so much going on. Look at some of the names there, WWF as well. My God, what initials. But I'll talk more about the game later on. Let's get into the game and to give it a bloody good go. So straight away, um, you can see there, if there was a two player here, you had the option of two on two. Now, whether this was a direct ripoff of people that were enjoying X-Men versus Street Fighter and a lot of those crossover versus games where you could tag team, this game with two on two gave you and a friend the ability to play a two player game on the same team. So more characters this time around compared with um, Mortal Kombat 3. Do you know what, let's go for the old reliable, let's go for Sub-Zero. But they're all in there, they included more people, I believe, uh, I'm not, I can't remember precisely, I think Scorpion didn't make the roster of Mortal Kombat 3 and that did annoy a lot of people. So I'm glad that Scorpion made the cut here. Let's go for Novice mode, because it has been a long time. But the Mortal Kombat storyline, Mortal Kombat 3 was where things kind of went crazy. Um, so let's get further, let's see how... Oh, there we go, so everyone knows that. Okay, maybe um, trying to go for a combo there, that didn't go so well. And crossover levels. No, Dead or Alive didn't do it first. Mortal Kombat did it first. I am going to do more than just that move, I promise. Um, and again, I don't remember any of the fatalities, but I'm sure we'll try and see if we can get some out for the video. And we've got that move as well. Let's see if we've got the sky one as well. Yeah, we do. You'll have to forgive me. I'm just getting my bearings. But I mean, if you were lucky enough to get this game at Christmas. Oh, nearly got the combo. Walk into it. Ciao very much. So the game plays beautifully well. Once again, anyone that played the later versions, um, the re-releases of this, and of course that Mortal Kombat collection game will know that things haven't gone so well. I'm gonna get that combo. Oh, too close apparently. The game's not gonna let me have the clone without working for it. I don't believe I've got the floor ice attack either. Ah, there we are, that's the combo. But no, this game plays insanely well. Most of this is muscle memory, in fact. Um, there's Cyrax, one of the cyborg characters there, just hanging around in the background. This is Striker. Anyone that played Mortal Kombat 9 or 10 will know that um, the revisiting of this Striker gets more of a, a look. Oh no, things aren't going that well now. feeling awfully cheap using that mood so much. Striker, big belt to the face. And again, live action uh, actors being recorded here. And again, we will of course do the trivia section later in the video as we always do. But 
it should be mentioned that this is the first time Sub-Zero was seen without his trademark Lin Kuei outfit. Um, and a lot of that is to do with the way the plot went with uh, that whole section of things. The rivalry between, or not rivalry, but hate of Scorpion with Sub-Zero did continue in the narrative flow of this game. I don't know. I, can't do it. I think it's forward, forward, down, high punch. I can't remember. Anyway. But the game plays very, very well. Um, no frame rate drops whatsoever. And of course, I'm not playing the original arcade game here. Oh, Sindel, you annoying cow. Sindel, I never quite worked out if she was a goodie or a baddie. I know she was um, Shao Kahn's uh, partner, but I didn't, I didn't know whether that made her a goodie or a baddie. No. The bosses in this, of course, are... Um, I believe Kintaro. I can't remember which one of the. I, I believe the it was the half horse man. Well, at least I got that in there. The other thing, uh, lots of new fact uh, things were introduced into both Mortal Kombat 3 and Ultima Mortal Kombat 3. Things such as an improved combo system. Um, there was animalities, brutalities, which were fantastic. I believe they may have been introduced later on in Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Oh, I believe I'm going to have a little bit of my own comeuppance now. Oh, he's going to get that kick in. A popular tactic there. Uh, the kick freeze. Oh no, he got out of that one. Oh, and that was the wrong Sub-Zero there, I've got to say. But no, for me personally, this game is still playing insanely well. Also, I'll come up in the trivia section later on. Oh dear, oh, at least I got that. Okay, did anyone see that? That's not even funny. Oh, that can't bode well. Ah, oh, there we go. At least I got the satisfaction of that, didn't I? Do you know, before we select another character, let's talk trivia. Oh, well, Mortal Kombat 3 it was released in 1995, November 6th to be precise, in the arcade, and had home port very soon after. Uh, the game itself utilised the Midway Wolf Unit arcade machine. We'd already talked about that earlier on here when we were talking about, what was it? You can check in the comments now, I'm sure it will come to me later on. Um, Armored Wall Combat 3 was pretty much well received both in arcades and early home ports. But with every new iteration and new release of the game, it actually got less and less popular. Indeed, right up until the point when it was released, as mentioned earlier on, on mobile, so iOS and Android versions, and how incredibly unpopular they became. Um, Armored Mortal Kombat 3 was actually also released in the arcade as an arcade um, online game. You could play with people online and that was utilising a T1 internet connection, insanely slow. Um, think 56k fellow Brits. Um, and it's very rare. It was more in beta testing. It was never rolled out fully. And the arcade machines were issued by Midway to certain arcades that were all connected so people could play with each other. Um, but it had that dedicated T1 line, so it was not cheap to run. That said, Midway did completely fund the operation. So no arcade um, uh, organisations and people that had big open rooms full of arcades, none of those businesses were ever affected by that overall cost. Already mentioned the 2 versus 2 system there, something that's pretty much made it onto every Mortal Kombat game afterwards. The idea of having two players that can tag in and out and fight up against another. However, the tagging system was far more rudimentary, rudimentary in this game and nowhere near as proficient as the Capcom and Marvel crossover games. Uh, attract mode, that's when you have an arcade machine that's when it's no one's playing it to pull people in. The attract mode of this game actually featured one clip, it's, you can find it online, Google, um, of Rain, uh, the purple Lin Kuei warrior, fighting up against Shao Kahn. Now, despite the fact that Rain doesn't appear in the game at all, so it's not like you could play it anyway, it could mean that Rain was supposed to be in the game, and he was included in Ultimate Mortal Kombat for the PlayStation 1. Uh, that was Mortal Kombat Trilogy, sorry. Um, later on, 
um, in Ultimate Mortal Kombat, new backgrounds were included, backgrounds that were then ported over to Ultimate Mortal Kombat for the PlayStation 1 later on. Um, but on top of that, the breakaway of one level into another, something that was pretty much never seen before in the arcades, um, featured the subway going towards the street, the soul chamber going to the balcony, and Scorpion's lair, in other words, hell, going through to Shao Kahn's cave, so just underneath. And there was also a bank background that only made it onto the arcade and Sega Saturn versions of this game. Um, now, we talk about hacks and stuff like that within gaming, but it is worth mentioning that there is actually a hacked version of Ultima Mortal Kombat 3 for the Sega Genesis, but it's too big to even be played on the Mega Drive. They actually managed to rip the code off a cartridge onto a computer and then not only include all of the characters of Ultima Mortal Kombat, so your Shao Kahn, your Kintaro, your Montaro, Goro, that sort of thing, but on top of that included Noob Cybot, Rain, and incorporated them into this giant modified version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat. The problem, the game was 10 megs in size, which was enormous. Most games at that time uh, were less than 4 megs, and 4 megabit, uh, megabytes was the, the maximum cartridge size that Mega Drive could handle. Think about that these days, 4 megabytes. Now at the time, that is the equivalent of almost, um, or just under 3 floppy disks. CDs being 700 megs, nothing to worry about but those days i mean the last song you bought on itunes probably three to four megs um the last so photo you took with your phone at high image you are talking three to five megs so all of those photos and songs are bigger than this game you're seeing on screen now but moreover the modified version was 10 megs absolutely enormous and the only way you could even play it was an emulator or a modified cartridge um, that read from it at an enhanced speed but again pretty much a no-go for the Mega Drive console. And lastly, uh, there's something called Shao Kahn's Treasure Chest, where during the course of the game when you beat it, you could enter in uh, some symbols and there were various combinations of rewards, um, extra characters, stuff that could be done to the arcade, different parameters with versus modes. And also when you did the verses, the little box was on the bottom as well. But in every single version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, you can play Galaga, the fly-along shoot-em-up game by entering in the correct code, I believe it's um, two Mortal Kombat symbols, two stone symbols, and one subject. I, again, you'll have to check. Google is your friend. But otherwise, let's get back into the game because Sub Zero kicked my ass there. So, another character that made it into this game who was in Mortal Kombat 2 was Smoke. Now, Smoke was uh, dressed in the Lin Kuei outfit in Mortal Kombat 2. There was a, a ridiculous number of things you had to do to play the secret characters or against them in Mortal Kombat 2. There was Jade and Noob Saibot, which is uh, Tobias, Boone, uh, Tobias and Boone, two of the surnames of Mortal Kombat developers. But in this game, all of them are included. And straight away, there we go. Sub-Zero is really kicking my ass here. I believe we're not going to have to rely on me memorising that combo there. Because Sub-Zero is basically taking me to the cleaners here. This is absolutely appalling. But I do remember playing this game around a friend of mine's house back when I was a kid. He'd got a hold of it a few weeks before me. And you know that thing when one of your friends at school had a computer game that you wanted to play? Good God, Sub-Zero. Have a heart. Um, but one of those games where your friends had it and you were just gagging to play it. This was one of those games I think that was in my brain when I slept. I desperately wanted to play it. Scorpion of course. Scorpion another new addition into this game. He was in Mortal Kombat 2. It was stunning that he didn't make it into Mortal Kombat 3. One of the big, big players of Mortal Kombat there. So I'm glad he made it into the game. Let's see if his air teleport made the cut. Good God! I'll be honest, that was depressing and rather humiliating. Now, why isn't the teleport functioning? Finally! Good 
Good lord, that did not go well, did it? And there's that full combo there from Sub-Zero. Do you know what? I'm going to give it one more go. I'm not calling it a day yet, people. I'm even using up all the credits I put inside. Okay, who are we going to go for? Of course, Raiden didn't make the cut in this yet. I forgot Raiden's not in this. Raiden was included in the Mortal Kombat trilogy, of course. I should mention, actually, because a lot of the time these videos can be rather distracting, most of these arcade games, if they've got dip switches, I will switch them to the easiest version. This is the easiest version. This AI is not giving me a break, is he? Oh, sadly, no um, fatality there for us today, but I'm going to wrap things up. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this brief playthrough session of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 The Arcade. If you've got any suggestions about games that you want to see on this channel, maybe get some reaction, maybe you've got comments and they're your favourites, pop it in the comments. But otherwise, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Oh, we got a combat code. Not a clue what this is. Let's have a look. There you go. There's your Easter egg bonus segment. I do remember something about uh, disabling throws. There we go. Didn't get anywhere anyway. Imagine you were putting co uh, coins into the arcade. Was that a way to get you back in? Anyway, thanks for watching.